Southern New England's trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon. We begin today with breaking news. The director of the Rhode Island Department of Health, Dr. Nicole Alexander Scott, is stepping down from her position. Alexander Scott will continue to serve as director for the next two weeks while Governor McKee looks for a replacement. Alexander Scott has served as the director of the health department since 2015. No reason was given for her resignation. In other coronavirus news this afternoon, a big announcement from President Joe Biden this morning. The president deploying military medical teams to six states across the country to help overwhelmed hospital systems. And one of those states is Rhode Island. Good morning, Providence anchor Casey Kantz is live in the newsroom with more on this. Casey. Yeah, Doreen, the president making that announcement earlier this morning. It's no secret how staff strapped and overwhelmed these hospitals and emergency rooms are right now. These, uh, this help is going to come in the form of medical surge teams from FEMA, basically military health care workers, including doctors and nurses, to help out these struggling emergency departments. Governor McKee thanked the president in a statement this morning saying these teams should be making their way to Rhode Island over the next couple of weeks. They'll be working on the front lines with health care workers, helping to take some pressure off and help the critical staffing needs at Rhode Island Hospital. Today, I'm announcing our next deployment of six additional federal medical teams, a total of more than 120 military medical personnel to six hard-hit states, Michigan, New York, New Jersey, Ohio, Rhode Island. And let me close with this. It's been a long road, but what's clear is that we get through this when everybody does their part. And we are getting some reaction today. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse thanking the president in a tweet this morning. Also uh, thanking all of our health care professionals on the front line. Senator Reid also supporting the president's help, saying in a statement that these additional military medical personnel will help, but also saying we all have to be vigilant and help protect each other. Much more still to come on this, including more reaction from Rhode Island Hospital later tonight at 4 o'clock. For now, though, live in the newsroom. I'm Casey Kantz, ABC6 News. All right, Casey, thanks. And, of course, be sure to stay with us for our continuing coverage. Like Casey said, we're going to hear from a doctor at Rhode Island Hospital about what this new medical support means for his staff. Again, that's tonight on ABC6 News, first at four. Meanwhile, a battle is brewing in Providence over Mayor Alorza's vaccine mandate for city employees. City Council President John Igliozzi announced an emergency meeting tomorrow in the hopes of passing an ordinance to slow down the implementation of that mandate. Igliozzi's ordinance would require the city to submit staffing plans to the city council for approval before laying off any employees. Much of the debate is focused on police officers. Igliozzi says laying off the nearly 80 unvaccinated Providence officers could cause lawlessness. It has the potential that he'll be firing close to 70 police officers. Well, now you have a problem where now you've jeopardized public safety overall. The city cannot go without any type of policing, that type of, that type of um, uh, officers on this beat protecting our citizens. Josie's announcement, a quote, misinformed stunt. The mayor says all city staff still need to prove vaccination by Friday night. If they don't, a review process will start for those employees, and that could lead to termination. Now to news new at noon today. The pandemic impacting trash pickup in Attleboro. We're told nine drivers are out with COVID, which is causing delays in trash pickup on some streets. There was also suspended service last Friday because of the snowstorm, which set drivers back a day. The mayor saying his office is working to limit any further disruptions in the future. And now to the weather as we take a live look outside right now with our sky cam. Oh, some sunshine out there, much warmer, maybe the best day of our week, Chelsea. Yeah, I say so. We're seeing significantly warmer temperatures than where we were at the last couple of days, and we have some bitterly cold temperatures that'll be moving in in the coming days. So enjoy today. We are sitting in the mid to upper 40s right now, 47 in Providence, 46 in Newport, 47 in Westerly. We started to see things warming up yesterday, but we're even warmer than that. On average, about five degrees warmer for much of the area this noontime. Plus, yesterday we had gusty winds, which made us feel so much cooler. Today, the winds are relatively light, so we're not dealing with much of a wind chill factor. We've been
been seeing a mix of sun and clouds all morning. At times it's really bright. At times you have overcast conditions. A much wider view shows you some flurry activity up to our north. No real threat to us. We're going to continue to stay dry through the rest of the day today under a blend of sun and clouds. Again, it is very mild today and will stay mild overnight with clouds increasing. Tomorrow there's a coastal system. It looks to stay far enough offshore to spare us major impacts, but it's going to be windy. And there will likely be some light rain and snow in spots. I'll have a full breakdown in just a few minutes. Doreen? Hey, Chelsea, thank you. And now developing news out of Seekonk. Police there investigating a serious crash. This happened on Highway 152 near Willis Avenue and Pond Street. Around 7 o'clock this morning, two cars crashed head on both heavily damaged. One person was rushed to the hospital and the medical examiner was also on scene. And now an ABC 6 News follow up. A Rhode Island man who investigators say faked his own death is, according to state police, very much alive this afternoon. He is in a hospital in Scotland fighting COVID-19. Nicholas Alaverdian, who has also gone by eight other aliases, was a suspect in a 2008 sexual assault case in Utah. That was later dropped in 2018 after an initiative to retest rape kits. Investigators say Alaverdian's DNA was present in other assaults across the country. Alaverdian is now awaiting extradition. He was an advocate for change at the DCYF in Rhode Island after growing up in the system. An obituary in 2020 had said he died from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. A water main break on London Ave in Pawtucket earlier this morning, causing this pickup truck to sink into the street. The owner of the truck said one of his neighbors notified him that the road was flooded with water, and when he went to try and move, the ground underneath him began to collapse. I see the water was braying, braying with my throat was parked, so the soon I, I moved it up. That's how I went to the sinkhole, and, uh, and I had to jump from the truck because there was a lot of water coming up. So uh, you can see, uh, just left everything there open. Police had to block off both sides of the road as crews worked to dig the truck out. No one was hurt. Still to come on ABC 6 News at noon, new details in the Capitol riot investigation. Who's now being asked to testify before the House Select Committee? Plus a Connecticut man being hailed a hero after saving a family involved in a serious crash. And later, what the U.S. Army is doing to try and recruit more soldiers during the pandemic. You're watching ABC6, Southern New England's trusted news source. Back now with the latest in the House Select Committee's investigation into the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The kitty, committee rather, asking Kevin McCarthy to testify about his conversations with former President Trump in the days and weeks surrounding the insurrection. Here's ABC's Ike Jachi. 
The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol is requesting to speak to House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy about his communications with former President Trump in the days and weeks surrounding the deadly insurrection. McCarthy rejecting their request and questioning the legitimacy of the committee's investigation. During the violent attack, McCarthy reportedly pleaded with Trump to give a national address, calling on the mob to leave, even later denouncing the former president on the House floor. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. These facts require immediate action by President Trump. Accept his share of responsibility. But two weeks later, McCarthy posed for this picture with Trump at his Mar-a-Lago resort. Now, McCarthy declining to comment further. I don't have anything really to add. I've been very public, um, but I wouldn't hide from anything. The Select Committee also requesting testimony from Trump allies Congressman Jim Jordan and Scott Perry. They've also refused, but the committee chairman telling the Washington Post they might subpoena them. Benny Thompson also saying the committee has evidence some members met with rioters. We have uh, information that uh, members hosted uh, people who came to Washington on that day in their office. The committee is looking for McCarthy to answer questions regarding communications he may have had with former President Trump, his legal team, Representative Jim Jordan and others around the time of the Capitol riot. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. The delivery driver in Connecticut is being hailed a hero this afternoon for saving a family involved in a serious crash. This happened last week after the snowstorm and the roads were still slick. The delivery driver was on his typical route when he saw a car in front of him crash and flip over, then start to smoke. He called 911, then got out of his truck and ran over to the car, pulling a woman and two young children to safety. I'm not thinking nothing. I just go and I see the car start to smoke and I just go over here and break the window and try to take it to save people. Luckily, no one was hurt. This actually isn't the first time this driver has saved lives. Since he delivers meals to the elderly, he's had a call for help several times when customers have had life-threatening medical problems. Still to come, a new way to shop for used vehicles online when this Car Bravo launches. And of all people to run into at the store, Pope Francis casually browsing at a record shop in Rome. What he left with when we come back.
In consumer news today, the U.S. Army is hoping cash will help fill its ranks during the pandemic. The Army is offering new recruits up to $50,000 in incentives to enlist for six years. The military branch says it is the largest bonus it has ever offered. The Army says certain jobs come with higher bonuses because they either need to fill them quickly or the positions are difficult to fill. Bonuses are also given to those who can quickly complete combat training. There's new evidence that Americans spend a whole lot of time on their smartphones. A new survey finds that we now spend, on average, just under five hours per day glued to our mobile devices, whether it's our phones or tablets. That is an increase of 30% in just two years. General Motors is getting into the online used car sales game with a new website called Car Bravo. Shoppers can check out GM inventories and they can also browse through lists on non-GM cars. Car Bravo launches this spring. The latest Barbie to join the lineup in the Inspiring Women series is journalist and civil rights activist Ida B. Wells. The doll carries a miniature replica of the Memphis Free Speech newspaper, which Wells co-owned and edited. She went on to become one of the founders of the NAACP. The Ida B. Wells doll hit stores on Monday, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And shoppers in Rome were in for a surprise when Pope Francis made an unannounced visit to a record store. The owners of Stereo Sound say before he became Pope, Francis would often visit the store to buy gifts before returning to Argentina. The Pope didn't buy anything this time, but the owners gave him a CD of classical music. And now, your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. After such a cold start yesterday morning, the temperatures started to climb, but it was a really windy day. I showed you this view yesterday over Block Island. There were a ton of white caps, a lot of waves out there. Today, things are much calmer, just a light breeze that's still coming in mainly from the south to the southwest, and those temperatures are very nice for this time of year. The average high is 38 degrees. We're almost 10 degrees above that in the mid to upper 40s right now in the Providence area, Newport and Westerly and Block Island early this afternoon. The breeze is light and variable in most locations. You can see still coming in mainly from the south southwest for our coastline. We're going to continue to see breezy conditions as we head through tonight and especially tomorrow as we're tracking a coastal storm system that's going to stay far enough ashore uh, offshore to spare us any major impacts but some very gusty winds in the forecast and eventually very cold air settles back in. So enjoy the mild temperatures and the dry weather and the calm weather that we have today. A view of the satellite radar image at the moment shows you dry conditions. We've seen a Kind of a blend of sun and clouds. At times it's really bright. At times you get some clouds passing through. Overnight clouds will continue to increase and we'll eventually see a storm system that will kind of join together and then eventually push offshore from us. We'll go through things in the coming days because there is a lot to talk about. Friday we have that coastal storm staying far away from us but bringing some light rain some snow, some mixing possible, especially for areas farthest east through southeastern Mass out towards the Cape. It's also going to be very windy. It gets windier the farther east you go. The Cape and the islands may have gusts 50 to 60 miles per hour in the Providence area around 40 miles per hour. Now, as that system pulls away, bitter cold weather starts to settle in. It's going to be breezy through the day on Saturday, and we're going to wake up on Saturday morning with wind chills that are down into the negative teens potentially. So some very cold air in place on Saturday and then on Monday there's another storm system we'll be watching right now. It looks like it was going to be mainly heavy rain, but it's Thursday. We're talking about a storm on Monday. There's still a lot that can and likely will change. Be prepared for really anything at this point. For the most point, it, most part, it looks like heavy rain, gusty winds. We may start as some snow and some mixing, especially inland, and we may end as some snow as that system pulls away. Future cast for today, for tonight and into tomorrow, you're seeing clouds increasing tonight. Now early tomorrow morning, again, areas farthest south and east getting in on some of that precipitation as the system is offshore. As we head through the afternoon, you're continuing to see some showers for areas farthest east, clouds for most of Rhode Island with gusty winds. As cold air rushes in as the system pulls away, some light snow possible through southeastern Mass and coastal locations. From there, we clear out, but that's when the bitter cold settles in. It'll be windy as well. Take a look at the forecasted wind chills for 7 a.m. on Saturday morning. Many spots in the negative teens, all of us below zero. Get ready for a very, very cold day on Saturday. Into Monday, our next system, you can see it 3 o'clock in the morning, some snow moving in 
from there, most of us dealing with rain. Now, there's a lot of snow on the northern and eastern edge of the system. So depending on exactly where it lines up, we'll end up with that rain snow line. But for us right now, it is looking like a lot of rain with windy conditions and temperatures in the 40s. But get ready for that bitter cold this weekend. Doreen? All right, Chills, thank you. Well, coming up, so what is Wordle and how do you play it? ABC's Will Gans tells us why it's all the rage on my. Now to the latest viral puzzle craze. It's a game called Wordle, and it appears to be the hottest thing since Sudoku. Here's ABC's Will Gans with more. Guys, I am obsessed with Wordle. Can't stop, won't stop. Okay, okay, what is Wordle? It's a free word game. The mission, to guess a five-letter word in six tries or less. After each guess, the tiles change colors. Green means it's the right letter and it's in the right spot. Yellow means the letter is in the word, but in the wrong spot. Gray means the letter's not in the word at all. It's kind of like that old game show, Lingo. Times, T-I-M-E-S. Well, you guys are good. It's the same word every day for everybody, and you can only play once a day. The game was created by software engineer Josh Wardle as a gift for his partner who loves guessing games. There's no app, it's just a website with no ads and you don't have to enter your email. Josh telling NPR, quote, the rejection of some of those things has actually attracted people to the game because it feels quite innocent and it just wants you to have fun with it. But recently, in a move that many are calling S-H-A-D-Y, this guy, Zach Shaked, released Wordle the App, a game with the same concept and a pro mode with unlimited play for a $30 annual subscription. Twitter wasn't having it. Steel is a five-letter word. Congrats. Apple removed Shaked's game and similar knockoffs from the App Store on Tuesday. Shaked has since apologized. Meanwhile, Josh Wardle is happy his free, no-frills game is bringing people together in a time like this one. Okay, if you want to get into the game, there are a few words you can use as your first guesses to help narrow down the letters. For vowels, try the word adieu. That has four vowels in it. And for consonants, try the word snort. It has four of the most popular consonants in it. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Early eight decades later, a World War II letter finds its way home to Massachusetts. Plus, Chelsea has another look at your afternoon forecast. We'll be right back.
An undelivered letter from a young Massachusetts soldier to his mom during World War II has finally been received. That's 76 years later. The wife of Sergeant John Gonsalves from Woburn received that unexpected yet cherished delivery from the U.S. Postal Service last month just before Christmas. The letter, which was dated December 6, 1945, was written to his mother to let her know that he believed he'd be coming home soon. It's unclear where the letter's been hiding all these years, but 76 years and three days, Chelsea, three days later, it was delivered by the USPS to his widow in 2015. John died at the age of 92. Wow. Isn't that incredible? 76 years later. I wish we knew where it had been. I know, and in such good quality right? still. Right, maybe it was stuck somewhere it behind a box been. or I don't know. That's wild. Unbelievable. Wow. What a cherished treasure. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, Dorian, we are looking at a, a nice day today. You're going to want to enjoy it. Temps are in the mid to upper 40s. We head into tomorrow. There's some light rain, light snow, especially for areas to the south. It's going to be windy too. As that system clears away, we have some bitter cold temperatures for the weekend. Dorian? Hi, Chelsea. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues first at four. Have a great day.